What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you a Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous video about five classes I think people should try. Now I've made a lot of videos about Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, including builds for beginners, full-on builds, talked about many classes, and today I thought it would be fun to just kind of talk about a few classes I don't often speak about, at least in four of their cases, that I think are great to explore once you start understanding the game more. For most of the classes on this list, I tried to pick things that I don't typically talk a lot about, but are still very good nonetheless. As I thought it would be fun ahead of the Enhanced Edition's release in just a few days to talk about some of the classes that, again, I don't speak as much about. So with no further ado, let's actually jump into this video. Number one on our list is the Brown Fur Transmuter. This is an Arcanist archetype that can seem a little strange at first glance. For starters, the class description I don't think is very apt, as it talks a lot about transforming your characters or others into things, and that's definitely part of it. But the thing a lot of people don't realize just by reading these descriptions and looking at some of the abilities even, is that brown fur transmuters are the best buffing class in the game because they get a ton of buffs to their transmutation spells, which are what a lot of your buffs actually are. And brown fur transmuters just make those spells straight up better. And once they hit, I believe it's level nine, and they start getting share transformation, they can transform their personal shape-shifting spells into touch spells, meaning that you can apply them to other people. This will allow you to do things like turn an animal companion into a dragon, and that kind of thing. Now, because of this, the class itself is relatively popular. However, the kind of big knock against it is that, as I mentioned, it's a great support class. They're good at doing a lot of support-oriented things, so this is the kind of class that tends to get relegated to a hired mercenary because there's not one in-game to play. So unless you want to do this yourself, which most people don't want to play a support class as their main character. It kind of gets overlooked a decent amount because of that, but it is nonetheless a very, very good archetype that is, again, widely considered the best buffing class in the game because of all these bonuses to their transmutation spells. So something worth thinking about throwing on a mercenary if you don't want to play it yourself. Next up on our list, we have the Mutation Warrior. While a lot of people might not necessarily play this class as its full level 20 pure class, if you will, a lot of people will dip in into this class for like four or five levels. And this is because the Mutation Warrior Fighter is a really cool archetype. What we see here is that it trades off armor training, which honestly is kind of whatever, for Mutagen. Mutagen is a very strong ability that is typically given to the Alchemist class. And what it does is buff one of your physical stats at the cost of one of your mental stats, which for a fighter who's not using any of their mental stats in typical gameplay is very strong. However, if you take this class a little farther and start picking up their actual mutations they can find, they can pick up something like Grand Mutation, which can grant them massive bonuses to their stats, meaning that just a pure Mutation Warrior is a lot of fun, though typically this is a class you'll see more often used for dips to get those very strong initial abilities, base attack bonus, and bonus feats that you can get from this class. But honestly, just the pure class is a lot of fun too, because let's be honest, if you want to play a Witcher in Pathfinder, this is basically the class to do it with. Third up on our list, we have a personal favorite of mine, and honestly a very, very popular one, and that is Sword Saint. Sword Saint is a Magus archetype, and it is very strong. So strong, in fact, that it is theoretically the highest damage in the game, which, you know, isn't always actually true, but theoretically, it is. And this is due to a lot of very, very strong abilities. At level one, they get to pick a chosen weapon, which they gain weapon focus for, and they basically relentlessly train with that weapon. So they go unarmored and usually one-handed with their single weapon. Unarmored sounds bad, but thanks to things like Archmage Armor, it's just honestly better than being in full plate half the time, because armor in Pathfinder is not well-balanced, we'll say. They actually get extra AC if they are unarmored from their intelligence stat, which is known as canny defense. They also get spell strike and spell combat, which allows them to use spells while they make full attacks every round, which means they get to attack with their weapon and also cast a spell at the enemy in the same turn. Later, they actually get perfect strike and perfect critical, which can maximize the damage they do and increase the multiplier on their criticals. And at level 20, you can get up to like times four just with the class that you 
see here without adding any mythic abilities extra. Literally just a level 20 sword saint can pick up like a times four critical multiplier. And believe it or not, that's not even everything about the sword saint. It's just a very, very strong archetype. And while it can take a little playing around with to really get the feel of, as it is a little more mechanically complex than some of the other classes, once you get the hang of it, it's honestly incredible. Hands down one of my favorites. Fourth on the list, we have an interesting one, and that is the Elemental Specialist Wizard. Now, this is an archetype that is kind of just better than the base class because you don't really give up anything. The only thing the Elemental Specialist gives up is that they have to take Evocation as their specialist school. They don't get a choice. They have to take Evocation. But the thing is, if you're going to play a Damage Wizard, you'd be taking Evocation anyway, so that's not much of a detriment. However, the thing that really makes this archetype cool is their Elemental Focus ability. And at level 1, they can choose to convert all of their elemental spell damage to one particular element, which on its own is pretty cool. But when you combine this with a mythic feat called Ascendant Element that causes a damage type of your choice to completely bypass resistances, you can make a wizard that deals in one type of damage that will always penetrate resistance. And this actually opens up a lot of fun options where you can use all of the elemental spells available to you even if you don't have the appropriate ascendant element that you would normally need. For instance, you could take evocation elemental focus fire and turn cold spells now into fire spells. Very cool concept for a wizard and again, it's something that really shines because of the mythic feat ascendant element. Because beyond that, in a lot of ways, it's just a basic wizard, but that one tiny little change gives gives this class a ton of use. Now, last on our list, we have an interesting one because it's a really good archetype for a class I do not normally like, and that is the Divine Hound Hunter. Hunter as a class, I think, is a hybrid of a little too much. It's kind of like Druid and Ranger meat. However, a lot of the archetypes and everything for it tend to be lackluster with the exception of Divine Hound. Divine Hound loses animal focus. Animal focus is a buff that gives you basically an enhancement bonuses to your ability scores generally, but also potentially a couple other things. The thing is, it's not very useful because enhancement bonuses are the same type of bonuses you would get from buffs and equipment, which means they're a dime a dozen and they're not very strong. So you lose everything to do with animal focus and instead you pick up the Inquisitor's Judgment class ability, but also you have to pick either a dog or wolf animal companion instead of the full roster you might normally get. You have to pick a dog or a wolf. However, dog is one of the best animal companions in the game because they get a weirdly high strength stat when they hit a certain level. In fact, I believe it's the second highest of all animal companions. I think the Triceratops is the only one that gets higher and it's by like two. And the dog gets a free trip attack. So they're restricting your choice to one of the best options. But the Judgment Inquisitor class ability is actually really cool. You basically get to give yourself a bonus. But because of another class feature of Divine Hound, you actually give this bonus to your animal companion as well. So not only do you get the judgment, but so does your animal companion. As you level up, you can have up to three of these active at once, which means your animal companion, which can already be very strong, is made even stronger. Combine that with all the free teamwork feats you're going to get, you could potentially even make a really good mounted combat build with this. But honestly, just the judgments by themselves are very good. But what makes Divine Hound such a great archetype, honestly, is that it drops probably the worst part of the class itself and picks up something way better in return. And getting to pass those judgments along to your animal companion is, again, also very strong because judgments are actually a really good thing about Inquisitors. They're one of the best things about them. And if that wasn't enough, I think Divine Hound actually makes a better Sacred Huntsmaster than Sacred Huntsmaster, which is an Inquisitor archetype that picks up an animal companion but loses the judgments. So if you were thinking about a Sacred Huntsmaster, you might consider going Divine Hunter instead. It is potentially more of what you're after. I know it is for me. Because if all of that still wasn't enough, they also get casting. They can cast up to level 6 spells. It's a lot. Which is funny because, again, most of the other Hunter archetypes just aren't that great. But there you guys go. Five classes, archetypes that I think people should try. As you can have a lot of fun with them. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it gave you some things to think about ahead of the Enhanced Edition. Like I said, I tried to include a lot of classes I don't normally talk about here that are nonetheless still very strong even if they don't necessarily fit my own personal tastes. But with all of that said, I certainly hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.